Hey guys, thanks for joining us at White Dog Outdoors today. I'm Brian Spinner, I'm one of the White Dog Guides. Um, for anyone who isn't familiar with us, we're outdoor guides in upstate New York, doing mostly fishing, but also a little bit of hiking, backpacking, and some paddling trips too. We cover central New York, the Adirondacks, love the Adirondacks, um, Albany, New York area, and then into Vermont and Massachusetts as well. Uh, if you want to know more about us, visit whitedogoutdoors.com. Uh, while you're here, hopefully you'll check out our YouTube channel with other content that we have. We have a lot of trip videos, how-to videos, hopefully some information that you'll find useful and helpful. Um, if you like what you see, subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell. As we release more videos, you'll be notified of those things. So today we're going to be tying um, a very simple fly. I like simple flies that are effective, and today we're going to be tying the Frenchie. Um, the reason we're tying the Frenchie is because I literally have fished them a lot this week and lost all of my Frenchies. Um, the trout are really keying on them right now. We have some of our beginning mayfly hatches uh, in upstate New York, so the Hendrickson's are starting to come out. And with that activity, um, we've been throwing a lot of different flies on tandem rigs, and these Frenchies are getting eaten way more than everybody else right now. So um, I'm actually completely out, except for this one that I just tied here. Um, so I need to tie some more. Okay. Um, We'll start, obviously, we'll move this guy in here. So I use a caddis style hook and a tungsten bead. All right, so um, since we're in upstate New York, I'm sticking with the local companies here. This is, um, we got some Sabre um, caddis style hooks today. Sorry, that's not very clear, is it? Um, these guys are out of Saratoga, New York, so I, I like to support local companies. We also buy a lot of our uh, materials from the Fly Shack. Um, including the tungsten bead. Um, these guys are out of Gloversville, New York. Okay, so we got a 1 8 inch tungsten gold bead on a Cata style hook, saber hook today. Um, okay, we are going to start by wrapping some lead here. This is going to be a Euro style nymph. I want this nymph pretty heavy, um, hence the tungsten bead and the lead that we're going to wrap on it. I want to keep a tight line on these flies and really feel what they're doing. Um, a lot of times you'll see the line stop when you're nymphing. Sometimes you won't and you'll just feel them. Keeping that tight line and being able to feel those, those heavy flies is, is really important. Okay, so we're going to start off with some um, lead wire, 0.015. We are going to wrap the shank of this hook starting at the tail um, and working our way up the shank, making consecutive wraps until we get to the bead. Okay. Once you get to the bead, you really just pull it off. It'll it'll break pretty easily. Shove it right up into there, and then we can pinch and break off the last piece of the of the lead there on the tail. Okay. Okay. Now the Frenchie is basically a pheasant tail, but it's going to have a hot spot on it. So we're going to be using red thread. So we've got the Ultra Thread um, 70. Yeah, you can see it's red. To start we are going to build a little bit of a dam behind the actual, um, behind the lead. We want to basically create a taper from the tail of the fly up toward the lead. Um, also, I, I build this dam because if you don't build the dam, um, when you go to actually wrap the thread over it, it'll move around on you a little bit. So this helps stabilize it. Um, we're just going to create a little thread base over the actual lead now. All right, we're looking pretty good here. We'll bring it back to the tail, and the first thing we're going to tie in is our tail. Okay, so again, because this is a pheasant tail, we are going to use a pheasant tail. Okay, so we're starting with just a piece of pheasant tail. I'm going to take, you know, probably somewhere between eight and ten fibers for this guy. Okay, I'm just going to rip those off, doing my best to keep the tips even. And I tend to go a little bit shorter on the tail. Sometimes I go a little bit longer, but I just kind of like the look of the short, the short tail. So I'm only going maybe a half to two-thirds of the actual tail, or the length of the shaft for the tail. And I'll just tie these in. Okay, and then as I tie these in, um, I'm actually just going to wrap the pheasant tail up the body as well and that just helps build a little bit of a 
bit of the fly. And these guys are pretty delicate, so under thread tension you just pull and they break right off. Okay. All right, we're going to bring it back down to the tail. These guys are splayed out a little bit more than I want. I'm going to try to calm them down a little bit. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. Um, we're going to tie in our rib material, which is just going to be some copper wire. So this is ultra wire copper. Okay, I've already got a piece cut. We're going to tie that in along the shank of the body. So I'm just going to lay it here along the shank of the body. And we're going to tie that in. We're going to bring it right back down to the tail. Okay. Now, part of the trick of tying the pheasant tail is getting fibers long enough that are going to be um, easy to enough to work with as you wrap up the body. We are a pretty decent size fly. Um, I didn't think I mentioned that before. This is actually a saber hook, but it's a size 12. Um, this seems to be the size of the Hendrickson mayflies right now. Um, so it seems to be a good size for right now. But uh, longer fibers, the better for the wrapping job. Um, I may be a little short on this particular feather that I'm using, but we're going to give it a whirl. I'm going to rip those off again, tie them in, I'm going to tie them in by the tips again along the body. Okay. And bring my thread up. Okay, now these fibers are going to just wrap. Just like this. They're going to go up the body. They're just basically going to cover the body of the fly. And we're going to wrap the same direction as we would wrap the thread. Okay, these are fairly delicate fibers. Okay, so I get them up to the top, pull them down, and wrap them right in there. I'm do a couple of wraps behind, and then I'm going to lock them in with a couple of wraps in front, too. Okay, all right. So I'm going to cut those off okay now to help secure these in here these these fibers are pretty delicate on the pheasant tail and you know after a fish or two if you don't counter wrap the the um, the wire which is basically wrapping it in the opposite direction that you that you wrapped the um, the pheasant tail um, then you would find it falling apart on you so we're gonna take this and we're gonna wipe it under so we're gonna counter wrap it just trying to keep the wraps fairly even. And this is basically um, creating a segmentation of a typical nymph body. Okay. You can do the helicopter thing to cut these off. I cut it. Whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm just going to secure that in now. Okay. Now, that's pretty much a pheasant tail, but we want to add that hotspot collar um, and a little bit of color to it. A lot of people use pink on a Frenchie. Um, for me, just recently, I just have this orange. Um, I've been using that, and uh, it's been working well um, on the fish that I've been fishing here. So I'm just going to continue to use that for now. But you know, experiment with the colors that you want to use. You know, make it your own. So I like the orange. So I'm going to spin a little bit of this on here. Doesn't take a lot, but I want the fish to be able to see a little bit of color. It's just I think it's mostly just an attractor. So just put a little bit, that's a little too much on one. Okay. Alright. We're gonna lap this right around the, thor the thorax part. Alright, that's good. Okay. So now we have that set. It's a little bit hairy maybe, but we can trim it back. Um, and then I want to build the hot spot collar, so I'm just gonna wrap the the thread around the collar until I see enough red that I got that little hotspot collar going. I got it going and I'm going to add the whip finish which is going to add a few more wraps to it anyway. So let's do our whip finish on top of that. Oops. Okay, there's our whip finish. So you can see we got a nice red collar, a little bit of color behind that, and then your typical pheasant tail. Okay. Just gonna trim this off, and that is a Frenchie. Super simple to tie. You can do them really fast, but super effective. Um, 
I've been really, really happy with the way that these have been fishing. We got a little straggler there. And I honestly, I'm going to cut this straggler, but you know what? It doesn't even matter. These fish, they want buggy looking things. Give them buggy looking things. All right, guys, that's a Frenchie. Um, it's pretty easy to tie. Go ahead and give them a shot. Definitely give them a, give them a try on the water. Um, one of my favorites. Right now it is my favorite uh, just because it's been catching so many fish. But um, anyway, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys can use it in your fishing. And uh, more importantly, we hope to see you on the water someday. Good luck to you.